Good day everyone, welcome to another episode of the Busy Bayman. Today we're going to be uh, doing some maintenance on this uh, 290 still. Size about six years old now. I've seen her in a few of my videos. Anyway, having a couple issues with it. It isn't idling properly, probably the main one, and it isn't cutting properly. Uh, anyway, I figured it'd be a good opportunity to uh, show everyone uh, some of the maintenance I do on my saw. A lot of people like to bring it to the shop and stuff, but uh, that isn't necessary. It's really simple to maintain a chainsaw, unless it's something, some serious mechanical issue. But uh, yeah, we're going to be going through this. We're in the shed here today. It's another snowstorm. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, uh, some of the parts, uh, or some of the components of the saw we're going to be going through. Like I said, the chain and maintenance on the bar. And my starter's been freezing up. I guess a lot of people have issues with that if you're using the saw in the wintertime and throwing it around in the snow. And uh, the fuel system carburetor mainly, air filter, and uh, some of the tools now we're going to be using, and there's nothing complicated, a simple chainsaw wrench, and for this one we're going to need a torque head, I believe for the Huskies and Johnson Reds, it's a hex head for the starter screws, and we're going to fix that so you don't need to carry that special tool anymore, and uh, the chain and bar, I'm going to be sharpening the chain. I'm going to go over the anatomy of the chain. Uh, kind of surprised how many people don't actually know how to sharpen their own saw. I've been using one since, 12, uh, since I was about 12 years old, I guess, and uh, Dad uh, showed me how to sharpen the saw, and you know, you get better at it as time goes on. Uh, some of the other tools, chainsaw file, and a good pair of leather gloves. It's always great when you handle them in the chain because uh, <laughs> I got scars from those. Alright, now uh, we'll get started, I guess. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is take off the intake and expose the breather and carburetor and see what's going on in here. This one's pretty simple, most of them are. Some of them are screwed on. Well, I can see the problem already. I don't know if you can. That's uh, completely, uh, the breather is completely clogged with sawdust. I haven't done any maintenance of this saw now for about a year. I knew the time was coming. But... Alright, for now we're going to leave this on because I'm going to take the air compressor and I'm going to blow out all the carburetor bay and the carburetor itself. Yeah, there's not much to keep in mind there. Just take the air, air compressor and make sure you get everything you can get out of it, and you're not going to get it all. And the reason we're leaving the air filters on so uh, we don't accidentally blow sawdust and dirt into the car. And uh, be careful not to put any air pressure right on the breeder itself because that'll also blow sawdust in there. Alright, I'll gear up the compressor now and I'll blow that out. Okay, we got the, car uh, the carburetor bay. I'll blow it out. Well, as best we can get it, I guess. It doesn't have to be super clean. Now we're going to take off this breeder. Uh, this one here is just on with a couple slot head screws. Oh yeah, and it's pretty 
pretty well completely plugged. And that pretty well explains my saw would not idle, I guess. Alright, I'm going to fire up the air compressor now, and I'm going to blow this out. Make sure, and now it doesn't matter what way you blow, because you're going to blow it out inside too. Make sure you get all the dust out of it. And now we can have a good look at that carburetor bag. And uh, it's not spotless, but uh, it'll do the trick. Uh, here's the carburetor housing. There's a bit of dirt inside. We're going to take this and blow it out also. Okay, here we are. It's that carburetor housing, nice and clean. Clean enough anyway. And here's that air cleaner, or breather. It's a lot cleaner there now. Used to do the trick. Pull this to one side. And next, we're going to pull off the starter. Alright, we got a torque head screwdriver here. The pop it four bolts should come off pretty easy. Like I said, we're going to fix this, fix those bolts, so we uh, we don't need to carry around a special screwdriver anymore. And most saws are like that; they give you a chainsaw wrench, but uh, <laughs> they don't give you nothing for the starter. And uh, you do have a lot of issues with the starter from time to time, busting cords, whatnot. So we'll pop these out real quick. And uh, there's the starter. And it has been freezing up. And uh, the reason it's been freezing up, I would assume, there isn't a lot of dirt in it. Only on the fan side, the blower side. But it probably needs to be oiled. So we'll do that too before we put it back together. We'll take the air compressor now. We'll clean this out. And we're going to clean up in around the, the flywheel magneto. And the coil. It's pretty dirty in there. Also. Alright. Alright guys, we got that uh, flywheel bay cleaned out. And it's a good idea to uh, try to blow out the cylinder pins as best you can. They clog up the dirt. You sile around hot all the time. Alright. Next, we'll pop off the bar and chain. You can use your chainsaw wrench, or most of them, uh, a lot of the new ones come with a no wrench required. Some of the smaller size, but most of the commercial ones come with a three quarter nut. Alright, we'll pop that off and have a look at it. go. Wow. Plug solid. Alright. We gotta clean this out. Good idea here to scrape out, knock out what you can, and uh, just take the air compressor and blow it to rest. There's your chain tensioner. There's a screw for tightening and loosening it, and this is where, this is the, the hole that uh, lubricates the bar, and uh, we'll show you the, the joining hole in the bar when we have to look at that there another once. Alright, I'll clean that up there, guys. Alright, we uh, blowed all that out with a shot of air. Now when you're blowing out this side of the saw, it gives you access to the other side of the cylinder. 
good idea to give her a shot of air in there also for the same reason. And if you blow in around the, the muffler, and a good shot of air there will clean the front of the, the cylinder wall. And the cleaner the engine, the cooler it will run. Alright, next. Uh, oh yeah, this one here has a, a commercial saw. Uh, do you know what it's called? Uh, clutch mechanism, I guess. Uh, when I bought the saw, it just had a star type one. But this one here fits the, the back of the chain better. For longer wear, They're pretty cheap to buy. I don't know, that will probably cost me about 20 bucks. And uh, those star type ones, when they start to wear, they're, uh, they're hard on the chains. They'll wear your chains, but these will uh, help you prolong the life of your chain. Alright guys, so here we are. We got uh, the saw pretty well stripped down, but we're going to take off it anyway. And we got all those components cleaned up. And I got one more thing to do with those, and that's those starter screws. I'm going to take a minute now to talk about the bar and chain, what to look for, and what to maintain. Obviously, a good sharp saw <laughs> is a lot easier on you and the saw. And uh, there's a few tips and tricks for sharpening that chain. And the bar is something that gets neglected a lot. You can see, be careful because this can be really sharp, the edge of that bar. I know guys are making machetes out of these old bars. Good steel in them. Anyway, the chain rods along this, in the center groove. And uh, the back side of the chain, if you can see it right here, it has flat on either side. And what ends up happening after a while is steel on steel and is only lubricated with a little bit of oil. And what happens is this notch ends, in, ends up getting V'd out. And will end up wearing the sides of the links of the chain and you'll find yourself busting chains all the time. You might get a sharpener to the chain and all of a sudden you bust. A lot of times and that's what that is. We're going to put the spare in the vise there now and uh, we're going to take a flat file and just rub along this edge just to level it and you'll notice if you push on the edge of that bar you'll find a little burr and that's where that chain has been wearing the, wearing the bar itself alright I'll set this up in the vise now and uh, I'll show you what to do alright I just got a very simple flat file, good quality file is good because uh, this is high tensile steel and uh, what you do is lay your file flat, as flat as you can get it and run it from the tip right to the bearing in the top right on back and this should only take couple passes. That's it. That's that side. Flip it over and do the other. This ensures that that chain doesn't wear and holds contact to the bar itself. That's it. This one wasn't that bad. And if you keep this doing this to your bar, it prolongs your life of your bar a long time. The last bar I changed was on a little old 17 still that got used a lot, trust me. And I got nine years out of that bar. And I'd say I went through about a hundred chains. Alright, the next tip. That little burr that's on the edge of your bar, just take a file from the front to the back. There you go, it's gone. Same thing on the other side. You'll 
on a really bad right at the tip if uh, you're using your sub to tip your bar a lot. And I don't like bending over with a saw that, that much, so I do use the tip a lot. Okay, that's the bar. Done. Oh yeah, another thing about the, the bar here. This little hole right here is where the oil creeps in from the oiler on your saw and travels up through that groove to meet up with the chain. Now you can't put a, a bar on upside down just because the lettering is one way. You can very easily use it the other and I have once the bar starts to wear on one side because on the opposite side there's the same hole and uh, so you you can never put it on upside down but you gotta make sure those holes are uh, clean of dirt so that uh, the chain can actually get oil. Alright guys here's uh, those starter screws I don't know how well you can see that the lighting is not that great here in the shed but it has a torque head on it. What we're going to do is we're going to take the little Dremel tool, or you can use an axe and we're going to cut a, a slot across the head of the screw so that you can use your slot head screwdriver. Now we're not going to go all the way down into the screw because that will weaken the, screw, the head of the screw itself. So we're probably going to go down about halfway the depth of uh, the torque or a hex, whatever you got there, of the screw head. Alright, I'm going to take care of the four of those now and I'll show you. Alright, I'm going to be using this little Dremel tool with a cutting wheel in it, but you can very easily use a uh, hacksaw. Make sure and keep those uh, cut straight. That's one done. Simple as that. Now my chainsaw wrench can take off these screws. I'll do the other three now and uh, we'll start putting the saw back together. Alright, first thing we're going to do is uh, put the chain back on. When you're putting your chain back on, make sure your uh, cutting edge is going up the bar on the left hand side. I don't know how many times I put these on backwards and I still doesn't. See it fitted on there. Pull it tight. We'll take the saw. Turn her up on her side. And we'll fit the bar on, make sure the bar, the chain, is inside the sprocket. And uh, the tensioner hole is in the tensioner. Not much more to it than that. Then we'll take this cover we cleaned out earlier. Take that cover we cleaned out earlier, place that on there, take a nut. Screw it back on, finger tight. We're only going to screw it there, finger tight for now because we're going to adjust the tension on that chain also. And that's something you got to do every now and then because those chains do stretch a little bit after a lot of use. Pull on it. Like I said, you should be wearing leather gloves. <laughs> I don't know how many times I cut myself, I guess I'll never learn. Alright, this one, you can see, needs to be retention. Uh, rule of thumb I use is uh, you should be able to get your chainsaw file in between the tooth and touching the bar. There should be enough slack there for that. Because if this chain is too tight, it will bind on you all the time. And if it's too slack, you'll be running it off all the time. Alright, so we'll adjust that there now. 
take your flat top screwdriver. I like to hold up on it. You tension it. See it's going tighter. And and that's good there. Like I say, usually any tighter than that and you'll find it bonding all the time. Alright, we'll take a three quarter wrench, finish tighten these nuts. And we'll get back to putting the rest of the saw back together. Breather, pretty simple. It was not upside down. Slides the top slides into a rubber grommet. The bottom just slides over there. Gets into the end of the carburetor. Screw those in tight. Well, that allow real tight. And Enough so it doesn't fall off. All right, put this housing back on. I like this one; it goes on pretty easy. No tools required. And last but not least, starter. All right, I already went and oiled the uh, the spool. Back on and those four screws are no longer hex head. Well, you still use a hex head screwdriver on. We did not ruin the screws, but I don't know how many times I've been stuck with a busted cord and no hex head screwdriver. And then you got to come home, fix it, go back in the wood. That's not going to happen anymore. I always got a flat top screwdriver. This is it here. That's what we're now using on those torque screws. Here we go. Won't be stuck no more. Alright, I'll tighten the rest of those up now and uh, we'll sharpen the chain. All right, this is a good idea to have a good pair of leather gloves because uh, it's not that sharp now, but you are sharpening it, and as you're rotating it, you stand a good chance of cutting yourself. All right, like I said, hold the file back and down somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees, and as you push the file through the chain, rotate the file. And that helps clean out the filings from the file itself. Anyone who hasn't done this before is a great idea to get good at it because uh, I mean there's nothing worse than a dull saw and it requires little effort and little knowledge. Alright I'm going to continue on and sharpen this side Turn the saw around and sharpen the other side. Alright guys, the chain is sharpened. We're going to try to get it going here now. A lot of guys like to put it down on the ground and pull it over. I never usually bother. It's one thing I always make sure I do do when I get it going is make sure the brake is in the locked position. So I'll hold the travel, turn on the choke.
Alright guys, the issue I was having with that size of wooden idol, obviously I got that fixed. That's probably what it was, that dirty breather or intake. And while I was at it, I've done some other maintenance. And uh, like I say, I hope it helps you out. There's nothing worse than having a side that doesn't work or cut properly. Alright guys, this is the Busy Bayman. Take it easy.